You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, hosted by Joey and Holly Baird. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is on the air, and it's heard on WNLV 860 AM and W293CX 106.5 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. WWDB 860 AM in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. WAAM 1600 AM and 92.7 FM Ann Arbor, Michigan. And KMET 1490 AM Banning, California. Coming up on the program today, we're going to go over seven secrets to a higher yield for your vegetable garden, how you can get more out of what you're planting, plus things you should know before we start applying coffee grounds or using coffee grounds in our garden. Our guest is Christine Willingham. She will be with us to uh, discuss her new book, as well as we'll answer all of your garden questions. The hour's jam-packed, so let's start that right now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. So glad you've taken time out of your day to join us on the program, whether you're in Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Southeast Michigan, Banning, California, or anywhere in between. Listening via the simple radio app, the TuneIn app, or through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com under the radio tab or podcast replay or in-studio video replay. Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend and gardening partner, Holly Baird. Now, you can find all of our content. It's available for free at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, where we have now about 1,400 garden videos, short and long format, in the garden, as well as in-studio video of this show in full length and podcast uh, form of this program. The executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and the spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA, we offer life time warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. You can always reach us uh, during the show, after the show, anytime, 3 o'clock in the morning, whenever you want, via, via the Ivy Organics hotlines. Ivy Organic 3-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields pruned and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic for more information, you can visit ivyorganics.com. You can reach us by the ivyorganics.com 301 plant guard email inbox, and that address is twvgshow at gmail.com. Or you can text us on the instant access ivyorganics.com text line, and that's 414. 414- Three six eight nine three one one. You can tweet us using hashtag TWVG. Our Twitter handle is at TWVG Show. Don't forget our text line is at four one four three six eight nine three one one. Now we want to, we're going to get in the program, but I do want to make mention here. We got a comment that came through on our Facebook page. Now we have a lot of sponsors that we self. Uh, reach out to. We don't have an agency that says, you know, we need this much uh, funding to pay for the radio programs in all the cities we're in. Holly and I reach out to each one of these companies individually, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of companies each year, and we've never asked you to personally go out and buy anything that they have offered. We reach out to them uh, for them to sponsor the program because they have products that would be valuable to not only Holly and my garden, our garden, but your garden. Um, and we uh, we love whenever you support them because they are able to support us and allow us to be on the air each week. So Donna writes in on uh, Facebook, and she... Uh, she said, I took your suggestion a, suggestion a couple weeks ago to my question regarding where to purchase garden seeds. The selection at my gardener was endless. I placed my order and my seeds arrived quite quickly. Well packaged at reasonable shipping costs. Seeds are sprouting as I type. I just placed my second order two days ago and look forward to more planting in the next coming days. And my gardener is my new and only place I will shop for my future need for seeds. Thank 
you so much for your recommendation. Wishing you a blessed day and both a successful gardening season. Just thought we would like, uh, we, we enjoy comments like that uh, uh, when they support and you support the sponsors that support us on the program. Let's get into seven tips to a higher yield for our vegetable garden. Everybody wants to have a vegetable garden that produces endlessly and abundantly, but there's some steps in which we have to fulfill in order to have that requirement for the this the garden to give back to us. So this is a big step is building your soil and we're not when we talk about this, a lot of people have this misconception that you're going to feed your plant. You're going to give your plant plant food, and that's going to feed your plant. That's hydroponics or <laughs> aquaponics. And that's even just some people decide that that's what they're going to do. Right. They buy plant food for their garden, and they feed their plants. So building your soil... Takes a lot of the work out of it for you, and it's cheaper. It is cheaper. And so there's a lot of things you can do. You can add organic matter, so you can add coffee grounds, you can add your own compost... You can add leaves in the fall, um, and you can add just compost you can purchase. Uh, yeah, we want uh, weed-free and chemical-free uh, grass clippings. Uh, we want to mimic as close to possible as what nature does in the forest or in the prairie. In the prairie, if man's never been there, what happens in the summer, the plants grow. In the fall, they die back. They break down. They compost. They regrow again. They naturally feed the, the soil. And the plants uh, are fed by nature, and then the earthworms and microbial life and the, the bacteria in the soil all works in harmony in order to produce the, the grasses or the plant life that's in the prairie or in the forest. We want to practice and r- mimic that as much as possible in our garden, and it will return tenfold for us if we can do that uh, in our backyard, front yard, uh, wherever the case may be. Right, so building your soil, there's a lot of, we have videos on it, there's a lot of information online. Just feeding your soil so that it feeds your plants is going to give you a higher yield. Let's talk about, we uh, can there, to, to maximize the space in our garden, many of us grew up in the traditional row planting method, where we plant a row, make a foot space, plant another row, which that not necessarily uh, requirements for backyard gardening. Right, so there's... Uh, this concept called the square foot garden method, and it's really great for your best use of space. So, for example, we're going to do real quick bush beans here. Well, we'll ex- explain what square foot garden method is. So, there. so, square foot garden method is you block your garden bed or whatever you're growing in off into one square foot dimension, dimensions. tiles. Yeah. Tiles, yeah. essentially. And then you follow the method, like, for example, 16 radishes, one in a square foot, one tomato plant in a square foot, two pepper plants in a square foot. 16 carrots. 16 carrots. So yeah. it gives you, and Ma- it's like nine beets. Yeah, m- so maximizes. it maximizes the space. Yeah. So, so if you maximize the space, that's going to give you bigger yield. So, for example, real quick here, bush beans. If no, you, you know, we're in a, in a, we're talking in a dimension of four foot by eight foot, thirty two square feet. This is the the mathematical uh, con, uh, uh, con- equation that we have created here for you. If we was to do radishes versus a traditional row method, based on the back, we're gonna do bush beans. Bush right. beans, uh, bush beans on the traditional row method, like it would be on the back of the seed packet, or practicing the square foot garden method. And pay attention to the numbers because there's quite a difference here. So go ahead. So in the same bed, 32 square feet, you plant um, nine plants per square feet. That's going to give you 288 bean plants. As opposed to four rows with four inch spacing one foot apart, that's going to give you 96 plants. That's a difference of 192 plants. So if you like beans, you're going to freeze them for winter or whatever, can them, that's a lot of different amounts of beans. Yeah, we got four rows versus 32 squares of nine beans per square. Uh, a bush bean plant, if continuing har- it, it, bush bean plants grow 40 to 60 days and bear fruit for about two to three weeks if you continue to harvest. And a bush bean plant will give you about a pint to a quart, well, upwards of a quart of beans over its growth cycle. So you figure that out. Uh, knock off the ends and when you can, you got quite a bit of beans uh, growing in a 32 square foot area of your garden. So we want to utilize the space the best we can by looking at different alternatives instead of the traditional way in which we have normally gardened. And that's what we practice even in our in-ground garden. We don't have to do this in a raised bed. It can be in a raised, it can be in a grow bag, actually physically in the ground and grid it off that way to maximize your space. So one thing that, if you look at any nicely laid out 
urban garden with a proper use of space is using growing up into the air, using trellises, growing vertically so that you get the plants off the ground. You're using that space to allow your plants to grow, but you're just trellising them. And trellising, so it's growing vegetables vertically, essentially. Trellising doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be fancy. You can get really creative with trellising. Functional. It doesn't have to be pretty. Now, mm-hmm. if you want aesthetics and all that, that's your deal. We find if it's, it needs to be more functional than beautiful in, in our right, garden. Right, definitely. So you can use anything from, we've used the sides of old baby cribs. The the spring of old baby cribs. Bob, bottom part. Bottom yeah. part. Um, you can use uh, fence posts and twine. You can use all sorts of things. You can use, you know, maybe if you have some old branches, you can make like a teepee trellis. We've done that. Very creative. There, so there's some people that will take an old mattress and burn the mattress off and have that spring structure and actually use that as a trellis in their garden. There you go. You can take um, things and wrap them around. You can take, like, cattle panels. If you don't know what cattle panels are, they're basically just, like, uh, large large gauge metal squares that the agricultural industry uses to make pins for cows and and hogs and sheep. Uh, You can get them in 8, 16-foot increments, and you can create uh, trellises with those as well. So there's definitely a lot of creative ways. There's no wrong trellis. No. there's There's no wrong trellis. Unless it falls over. Yeah, you have to support your trellis because whatever you're growing is going to acquire weight, and you have to account for that in the long run of what you're going to put on there and how much stability is required to support it. And harvesting makes it a whole lot easier when you're doing cucumbers or you're doing uh, uh, bush uh, pole beans or other climbing squash. You can pick it a lot easier rather than doing that search through the leaves and trying to find then you find a cucumber the size of a football that you've missed for three weeks. Uh, and we want to continue to harvest these crops, otherwise they will shut down and quit producing for us. And that's also a key to a high yield, continually harvesting the produce on the plants that require that. You know, if a pumpkin or whatever, you've got to let it wait to maturity. Bush beans, pole beans, peppers, tomatoes, eggplants. You've got to keep harvesting these things, otherwise they're not going to produce. Grow different crops. Some people want to grow a lot of one crop uh, because um, you want to grow a variety of different crops. Uh, some store longer than others. Some are very short shelf life, like leaf lettuce or spinach. And I think with that being said is that a lot of times typically, in especially the Midwest, um, where we are and versus like even Chicago area, Milwaukee, um, parts of Michigan, Minnesota, a lot of people get this idea in their head that you're just going to start growing Memorial Day through Labor Day. And that's not true. You have basically, like, kind of, depending on where you are, two months on either side of that, or a month and a half. each. But each, gr- so. grow a variety of yeah. plants. Uh, and think about how you can grow things sooner. Right. And we always grow something. We try to grow something unique, something different. Even if it's a different variety of tomato or pepper or cucumber, we throw another one in there just to see because there's so many hundreds of different varieties of these crops that one may be sweeter or more bitter than the other, and we either you know like it or don't like it. Uh, plant succession planting. Now, some people may be new to the term of succession planting, Holly. What is the uh, practice of that? So succession planting is basically instead of planting your entire crop at one time, you kind of variegate it throughout the season or for a couple weeks. Um, so, for example, like beans, you would plant bush beans. Bush beans yep. You would plant bush beans maybe one row or one block one week. The next week, plant another ro- block. And that way you kind of have them available for harvest at different times. Now you obviously have to figure out when your last or your first average frost date is in the fall, back off in the numbers of days that it takes for those plants to reach maturity, so you're not planting a crop that takes 60 days and your frost is 35 days away. So you have to do a little math there, but it works out well. And the actual benefit to that is if you have a crop failure, a week later you're planting another row of that same crop, so you're not having a, it's not a one and done, oh I got to wait until next year type of situation. Stretching the seasons. We talked a little bit about this. Uh, on the early fall, uh, the, the cool season crops in the spring and the fall, California can grow it in the winter, uh, or, or winter here, and you can create low tunnels or high tunnels, frost covers to prevent, uh, prevent or uh, protect or these plants. Year-round gardening with um, uh, 
what are those things called? High tunnels. High tunnels. No, yeah. the little box things. Oh, well, um, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And <laughs> slipped our minds. Yeah. Uh, so you, you can look at your cold, own, frames. Uh, cold frames, your own gardening, things like that. So you, there's ways you can stretch your season. There, there is a gentleman in Chicago. He has a YouTube channel, One Yard Revolution, and he grows in Chicago, Zone 5, all year long in high tunnels, double tunnels in his greenhouse, uh, a, a vast variety of leafy greens and root crops, and he's very, very successful at it. And uh, he, he teaches us a lot, even though we only grow uh, in the spring, summer, and fall. And finally, the one that uh, everybody does not care much for is weeding. We must weed our garden because the weeds are more aggressive than the vegetables that we are growing and will overtake our crops. So by weeding, I don't mean just till them up or chop them off. We have to extract the roots from the soil, otherwise those roots, roots will propagate and produce more vigorous plants. So by purging the beds from the roots, and it's a tedious process, but it's something you only have to do every so many years, and that's what I'm doing right now with our beds, if you follow us on social media, purging the beds of all the roots so the soil is clean. There's going to be some plant weeds that still come up, but if we can remove the majority of weeds, our plants are going to be so much more productive because they're not being competed by the weeds in which is in our garden. Definitely, yeah. You want to make sure that you're not having giving your plants competition, especially with weeds, and just be smart about it. Uh, so that is just some of the multitude of tips that we can exercise for our garden to get a better yield um, when it comes to harvesting and, and growing. We want to have the best success that we can in our garden. Well, when we come back, don't go anywhere. We're going to talk about the benefits or the negatives about using coffee grounds in our garden and how to go about doing it. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Email the show at twbgshow at gmail.com. Never question your garden soil again. Know what's in your soil with confidence. Professional grade soil test for the home gardener. My Soil Savvy has the easiest soil test on the market. Ship it to them, get your report, emailed with nutrients recommendation, and grow happy, healthy plants. MySoilSavvy.com. Use coupon code TWVG19 and save 10% at checkout. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Dharmaceuticals essential oils are high grade, very pure, and high in quality. They have synergized blends made with the finest raw materials. For more information and to order, visit Dharmaceuticals.com. Did you lose your tools again? This garden tip is sponsored by BioSafe, organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products, from plant food to fertilizer to one-of-a-kind herbicides, organic weed killer. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Visit BioSafe.net to learn more and save 10% on your next order by using coupon code TWVG at checkout. Do you keep losing your garden tools in the garden? Paint the handles a neon color so they stand out among the ground. And you can spend more time working than searching for your tools. 
Simona's Universal Pectin is high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy, homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. Do you seek safe, effective nutrition solutions to boost your health and quality of life? Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer with 90 years of expertise. Our third generation family owned company proudly grows nutrient rich ingredients at our certified organic farm in Palmyra, Wisconsin, enabling us to produce high quality whole food solutions that change lives. For help identifying the best supplements for you, find a local healthcare professional today at standardprocess.com forward slash. Patients. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear in all black bags, protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at shieldandseal.com. Your plants are greener when using Hydrobox, revolutionary in plant watering. Hydrobox catches the water from water and delivers it straight to the roots to release when plants need it. You will water three times less often and plants grow faster. Hydrobox is an innovative little gel filled pouch that goes in the bottom of a pot, container, or grow bag. Multiple sizes based on need. Easy to install and use for indoor and outdoor use. Saves time and money. Lasts up to three years. Look for it at homedepot.com or visit gohydrobox.com. New, new natural healing ointment. USDA certified organic. Get your tube at nunuhealing.com. Interesting information about the dandelion. It's time for this week's Garden Fun Fact. Dandelions have a taproot that can extend to 15 feet deep, typically 18 inches. The taproot is very useful to reduce compaction soil in your garden. They can draw nutrients such as nitrogen from the soil and concentrate it in the leaves and the roots. Dandelion seeds can also travel up to 5 miles. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Ivy Organics, Power Planter, Root Assassin, Beans and Barley, Biosafe, Bob X, Pomona Universal Pectin, Pro Plugger, Standard Process, Tomato Snaps. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. Holly's family apparently forbids rhubarb to plant in the garden. I don't know what happened years ago. It must have been a big rhubarb. I don't know. He's not, he's not lying. It's a true story. Yeah. With your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Still haven't been able to get the answer. We were at a talk the other day, and she wouldn't even tell them, so I don't know what's going on. But what I do know is Dr. Earth uh, can help your garden grow better. Dr. Earth is committed to clean and healthy gardening through creating cutting-edge or natural organic garden-friendly products based on research and innovation. After 20 years, they are the leader in organic lawn and garden industry. They do not use ingredients such as biosolids or composted household waste or synthetic chemicals. Instead, they have manure-free fertilizers, organic soils, insect control, and liquid fertilizers. If you want to grow the best quality food organically to feed your family, that is the founding principles of what Dr. Earth is all about. They have experts to find the most innovative ways to help you grow your best organically. Visit DrEarth.com for more information and where to buy. Coffee grounds are a free resource that we can use to enrich our garden's nutrient uh, uh, availability. Yeah. You know what you don't use to in- increase your garden's nutrient availability? What's that? Rhubarb. Uh, okay. <laughs> so there's, you can get coffee grounds for free. We And there's a variety of different sources. There's nat- national um, 
chains of coffee shops where you can go in and ask, and they've got a program where you they'll give you a bag of used coffee grounds. Yeah, but there's local, too. Yes, mm-hmm. that's what we encourage. Go to your local coffee shop, call them first. And if and you're not sure, yeah, call them first, because if you just show up with a bucket and ask for coffee grounds, they might be like, okay, no. So you definitely want to call ahead and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm get, I need coffee grounds for my garden. If I bring you a bucket, can you just... Uh, Hook me up. We've and never had a no. We've never had a no because they're putting those coffee grounds typically into a dumpster. The dumpster, yeah. so they're not going to say no to to giving them to somebody that's going to use them. So, uh, and usually in a day, it's picked up, and they're very thank you. And, and there's always when we go, there's three or four other buckets there. A lot of times. And, and what they'll do is um, first, let's talk about why we want to add them. To but, our, and sometimes you okay. need to have the lid, so find out ahead of time because, like, I don't even know where our lids are for our, our five gallon buckets. But, but some do require. Yeah, because that's require just their, their requirement. So okay, why do so we add coffee grounds to our garden? Well, they add nitrogen. They're about, what is it, 2% nitrogen by volume. So they add nitrogen to your soil. They also help attract worms. So if you're low on worms, the worms are very vital to your soil. Um, we, they, gotta, we have to work the coffee grounds yeah, in. Okay, so first we're going to talk about why. Yeah. Um, so you want to add the coffee grounds from the nitrogen. They feed the worms. They're good organic matter. They fe- Just like we talked about in the first part, they build your soil. That's what coffee grounds do. Um, and you can work the filters in as well. That's just another composty um, and, and the coffee shop's not going to separate the the, co- the the filters and the coffee grounds. They're gonna, it's all going to go in one bucket. No, so, so, don't, it's fine. so don't be uh, alarmed. So when you add them, you can add them in basically any time of year, um, but spring is good, fall is good. Um, in the past, we've added them in, in the fall and then mix them in and then put our leaves on top. That's a good way to, to add them in. So what you want to do is you definitely do want to mix them in. You don't have to till them in. You can just take your garden fork or your spade and just mix them in. A couple of inches because that 2% nitrogen will evaporate into the atmosphere and you'll lose that benefit if we just broadcast them on top of the ground. And negatively, the ne- second negative thing about it is if we just pour the coffee grounds on the top of the soil, it creates a crust and prevents so- water from permeating down into the uh, the soil. So it's a, a hard crust or a hold, hard mulch. We don't want that uh, in our garden. So we want to work them in. And we can also, by volume, people say, well, how many coffee grounds, how many pounds, how much do I put where? Here's, a, here's what we do. Five-gallon bucket, 20 square feet, work it in. You're, you're going to be fine. Uh, the worms and microbial life and the, the fungi and all of that will start breaking it down. So you, you don't want to add tonnage to an area. But a five-gallon bucket, 20 square feet, that that works well for us. No, no, I know a lot of people would be concerned about the acid, um, the acidity, co- yeah. the acidity, because coffee is, is a, a higher acid component, um, plant, whatever you want to call it, beverage. Bean. 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 <laughs> um, but... The acid gets brewed out. So basically the coffee drinker consumes the acid and we don't the garden doesn't consume that. So And what and what little acidity may still be in that coffee ground, the soil has a natural it's called buffering capacity where it re- rejects a certain amount of I don't. Uh, uh, toxicity is not the correct word for this, but it rejects uh, a certain amount it's of. It's kind of like our liver. Our liver processes things that are good and, and bad, and the soil kind of does that too. The yes. buffering capacity does that too. Now, um, if you drink tea, you can definitely add your tea grounds. Um, I would, if with your tea bags, you would want to remove the. If you use like the the pre-made tea bags, you'd want to remove the little staple thing. You could otherwise. I, 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 it's it's a staple, you right? Know. But ideally, that's what yeah, you want to do. Yeah. Otherwise, if you just drink like loose leaf tea, like I do, and I use um, the either the, the little cup or I use the other bags, you can just toss that in there. Too, I don't depending on your tea, whatever is in it, whatnot. It's going to add different things to your soil. But it is if you're a tr- tea drinker, that's definitely something to consider. So you can add all kind, you know, coffee grounds. Uh, you can add year round. You can also add them to your compost pile. Coffee grounds are considered a green item when going into your coffee or your your compost pile. Uh, you, the, the the book says the internet says you need to have fifty percent green items and fifty percent brown items in your co- uh, compost pile in order to, to for the compost to break down equally and efficiently and timely. 
uh, you don't have to have that exact ratio. If you have more than one or less than one, it still will break down. You may not get the internal heat process, but if you don't have a lot of greens, like some people in the fall or in the winter, they'll do winter composting. They'll add their brown scraps, shredded paper, shredded leaves, whatever the case is, and they'll use that coffee grounds as a green uh, nitrogen uh, or the green particles in that co- compost pile in order to heat the pile up correctly. And that's something to think about when if you're doing that um, heat composting or that heat uh, brown and green composting balance that even though coffee crowns are brown, they're considered a green because of the, the nitrogen that they have in them. You leave a, a, a bucket of coffee grounds uh, set for a couple of days and stick your hand down and it starts to get a little warm. Yeah. Um, so we want to do that. Now you can also trench compost these things and that meaning if between your rows of tomatoes you dig a trench and um, you can bury the coffee grounds there heal them up, and then let them break down, uh, and then plant in that row the next year. You can also do the uh, trench composting that way with coffee grounds, or your kitchen scraps, and we're mm-hmm. kind of getting away from the coffee grounds, but it all kind of all ties together uh, with, with the uh, with that situation. But I think the takeaway here is that you don't have to... Um, do you have a caller? Yep, let's okay. go to the Ivy Organics uh, hotline caller. You are on the air. Hello, caller. Good morning. Good morning. Well, good morning, plant people. How are you doing this morning? We are doing well. We thank you for giving us a call. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, I have a question. Yes. If I want to, if I want to grow, for for example, parsley, basil, or rango inside my home, uh, is that possible? Would you recommend it okay to grow parsley, basil, or ran- a rango? Oregano. Uh, herbs. Yeah. Inside- yeah, yes, sir. It's not your part, uh, home, uh, be, you know, regardless of being outside yeah, or anything. You can, you can grow them in your home. We grow in our kitchen window. We grow all of those things. Basil. Well, we don't grow parsley, <laughs> yeah. but we grow basil, and we have grown oregano. Uh-huh. And you just take, like, a little hanging basket. It doesn't have to be very deep, maybe, like, six, eight inches deep, um, and a little hanging basket, a little pot, put some soil in there, and you can plant your seeds, and you can grow in your kitchen or a window or wherever you have space. South, south facing window. South facing window is good, or even an east or west facing window, just so that a north facing window would not be ideal, though. Yeah, herbs are a low light requirement or tolerable plant, and you can be very successful at growing herbs inside without the requirements of grow lights uh, in your kitchen, just with the natural ambient light. Oh, okay, great. And another thing now, if I wanted to keep them healthy, besides just using tap water or something like that, water maybe once in a while, what about plant food? But you normally use the uh, house plants or something like that? As long Is as you okay use, use plant? a planting mix uh-huh. that has a slow-release slow release fertilizer in it, you, you should be fine. Um, after about a year or so, you could do something like a compost tea, or um, like a liquid organic uh, plant food or something, but um, you have to watch the plants. And you only want to water them typically once a week. Don't water them like every day. Just water them once a week. That's going to be best for them. Oh, well, thank you very much, and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Thank you for calling. You're looking to control common insect pests like Japanese beetles, weevils, borers, various beetles, and their larvae without harming the good insects? Phylum Bioproducts does just that with potent and environmentally safe biological pest control products. It is the first BT insecticide powerful enough to control both adult and larvae stages of susceptible pests. And unlike the chemical products, Phylum's line of products do not pose a risk to beneficial insects such as bees, butterflies, and other pollinators that exist with chemical products. Therefore, you can now achieve control rates that you expect from the chemical insecticides without doing harm to the rest of the environment. Visit PhylumBioproducts.com. That's P-H- Y-L-L-O-M, bioproducts.com. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, self-proclaimed garden nerd Christina Willingham will be with us right after this. Use Twitter to reach Joey and Holly at TWVG Show or hashtag TWVG. Power Planter is a family-owned earth auger manufacturer. The Power Planter earth auger will transform your garden experience. It helps homeowners and professionals complete almost any planting or digging project faster and more efficiently than using a shovel or a spade. 
Power Plant to Earth Auger creates loose dirt when drilling holes, giving your plants better root to soil contact to help reduce plant loss for healthy and more beautiful trees, shrubs, flowers, vegetables, and grass. All of our augers are hand welded and made in the USA, lifetime warranty. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Eco Garden Systems is a revolutionary way to grow food, a fully contained raised platform with a conventional watering system, solar power unit optional. Made from recycled material in the U.S., Eco Garden Systems Raised Garden Bed offers sustainable organic gardening that is environmentally sound, quick and easy to set up, maintain, and fun to use. Fill your garden with soil and plant your seeds. Your Eco Garden will take care of the rest. Can set up in backyard, patio, and even your driveway, any level surface. For more information, visit EcoGardenSystems.com. Use coupon code WIVEG2019 and get $295 off listed price of $1,695 plus free shipping, a $250 value at EcoGardenSystems.com. The new way to support your tomatoes, wrap it and snap it, TomatoSnaps.com. World's CoolestRainGauge.com. Need I say more? Take the pain out of planting with the Pro Plugger 5-in-1 Planting Tool. Step, twist, pull, and you're ready to plant. Digs perfect size planting holes. Soil gets stored in the tube and empties from the top. Helpful for weeding. ProPlugger.com. Soil Diva is the best kept secret in the gardening world. Soil Diva is an all-natural liquid biological soil and plant stimulant product. Check it out at Amazon.com. Search Soil Diva. Big Fats has a variety of unique and delicious hot sauces available at mild, medium, and hot. A small company looking to change the world with all natural hot sauces made from quality ingredients and a whole lot of love. BigFatsHotSauce.com. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. Bobex is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants, will not wash off, and is guaranteed. Bobex deer was independently tested against nine known Competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. Bobex can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more, visit Bobex.com. B O B B E X dot C O M. There's a number of ways to water your plants, but if we don't water, they will die. It's happened to all of us. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. Watering is one of the key aspects of a successful garden. But there's many different ways in which we can go about watering our garden. From overhead irrigation to sub-irrigation to drip irrigation or different mechanisms such as watering cans or oyas that we can insert in the ground. The one thing we want to be aware of is when we water, we want to prevent the soil from splashing up on the plants, whether it's drip or overhead or even when it rains on a regular basis. 90% of the problems your plants will face will be from diseases that have from the soil splashing up on them. So we want to mulch heavy with a chemical-free, seed-free grass clippings, with a straw, leaves, whatever you may have to, to put a barrier between the soil and the plant. If you're concerned about chemicals that are in your water going into your soil, you can purchase a water filter, but the soil has a com- buffering capacity which repels a lot of that. Chlorine in the water does not destroy the microbial life as once was thought. That has been proven ineffective, as well as you can just use rainwater that you've captured from a rain barrel. You want to water regularly to keep the soil moist like a damp sponge, not soggy or swamp light. By doing these things, you'll have a successful garden. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. Beans and Barley Market and Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side and greater Milwaukee area where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh squeezed carrot juice, 
a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cards, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available. Open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414-278-7878, and online at beansandbarley.com. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart, Dharmaceutical, Dr. Earth, Flame Engineering, Handy Safety Knife, Hydro Box, Wisconsin Greenhouse Company, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Maker, Soil Diva, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. It's time to start thinking spring at Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. They got their spring kickoff, open house May 4th, 11 to 2. Plus, just because it's an open house, that doesn't mean you don't have the opportunity to get your garden going. They'll have your vegetables, herbs, flowers, bulk material, and a whole lot more. You can find Blue Mills at 4930 West Loomis Road in Greenfield, just south of Layton. You can call 414-282-4220 and bluemills.com. Don't forget, they have lawn care and landscape services, and you can click on their website at bluemills.com to get an estimate. All this information can be found at bluemills.com. You can visit them at 4930 West Loomis Road in Greenfield, just south of Layton, or call 414-282-4220. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your host, Joey and Holly Berry. Welcome back to the program. Holly, let's go to the IV Organic Screen One Plant Card Hotline and bring in our next guest. Christy will help me empowers people to grow their own food, to be more self reliant, and to reduce pollution and waste one garden at a time. Christy is an author and founder of GardenNerd.com, the ultimate resource for garden nerds, where she publishes information packed monthly newsletters, weekly blog posts, YouTube videos, and podcasts. She also specializes in small space organic vegetable garden design and consulting. Between 70 and 80% of her family produce comes from the garden of less than 300 square feet. She lives in Los Angeles with her husband, some chickens, and two gardens. Welcome to the program, Christy. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for taking time to join us on the program and, and share some of your garden wisdom with Holly, myself, and all of our listeners. Sure. So you come from a background of dance, drama, and theater model and modeling. Where and when was the time where or how did you get into the world of gardening from that background? Well, I it tied close with you when I became a vegetarian in 1993. The more I learned about our food system, the more I wanted control over it, and so it, it kind of snowballed from there. <laughs> I, I found out I could get a community garden spot in my local area, and I started to uh, garden in a small space, and then it just uh, became a passion for me, and then I uh, people started to say, Hey, you really know a lot about gardens. You should do this for a living, and so I did. And, and that's and the the garden nerd, nerd uh, terminology came from that. Yes, exactly. So we learn, uh, we all learn from each other, and that's why we bring people like you on the program to share some of your knowledge with us. And you have a really beneficial, um, I guess information to share about the benefits of worm castings either bought or in your garden that helps eliminate aphids on your plants. Uh, Can you share that with us? Sure. So worm castings are not only a really great fertilizer for the garden because they have higher concentrations of nutrients, more so than compost, but worms don't have teeth. They use enzymatic mouth parts to digest their food, and so this enzyme called chitinase passes through their digestive system and out into the castings, which is a nice for poop. And that uh, is that cat, the, I'm sorry, the uh, chitinase is taken up by plants. You put it around plants, water it in, um, and it happens to dissolve exoskeletons of soft-bodied insects. So whenever I have a plant that is suffering, worm casts are my first line of defense. That, that seems like a terrible way to go. Uh, if you're, 
sucking the juices out of a plant and then dissolving, your body is dissolving as you do it. It's just horrible. I don't think they know what's going on. So <laughs> Yeah, they're probably dying happy. <laughs> right. But the, going back to using worm castings as a... Um, uh, using worm castings as a uh, defense mechanism for aphids yes. is uh, a very unique property that nature provides for itself. That is really cool that uh, you can use worm castings. And, and that's why you can have worm castings that are uh, in your garden or you can purchase worm castings. That, so composting is easy if you have big piles and equipment to turn it. But for most of us, we have small backyards, limited space. Um, what have you. So what are some easy ways we can all compost, not take up a large area and keep it within our our lives? Well, for people who don't have room for a compost bin, I always recommend a worm bin because like we're talking about, worm casts are really effective in the garden. But the other thing that you can do if you don't have room and just don't want to deal with turning a pile is what's called trench composting. So you can dig a trench, and it needs to be deep. You have critters to come dig up your yard. So at least 12 to 18 inches deep. And keep your scrap in the freezer until you have enough to fill it. In. And the freezer sort of starts the breakdown process because as water expands, it rubs the cells, the fruits, the veggies you have in the freezer. So then you take that outside, dump it in the trench, and you cover it up and bury it. And after a few months, it's ready to plant in. So you can compost right in place and then cycle back around that spot later and plant some food in the, in your crops in that spot. Okay. So how how can we grow lettuce in the summer, leaf lettuce, because the long days in the heat causes the plants to go to bolt to seed? What are your tips? You grow in, you're in Los Angeles. I know that you can grow lettuce essentially in your winter, but how do you kind of extend the seasons with that? Yeah, in summer it gets really, really hot here. So I have a couple of strategies that I use to grow lettuce into the hot weather. One is to use shade cloth, so like a 40 or 50% shade cloth that really helps reduce the stress on plants. So covering them with shade cloth, they help. And the second thing is strategy uh, as far as laying out your garden. So most people will grow beans or cucumbers up the trellis, and if you shift your trellis toward the south, and plant lettuces and tender greens behind them. Once the lettuces get mature, by that time the beans and the cucumbers are growing pretty much full in, you know, they're filling in. And that provides a little bit of that shade for for the lettuces and arugula and other greens that bolt seed really quickly in the summer. Well, a neat way to uh, utilize the space and get more out of the area in which we're growing. Uh, we get this question a lot, Christy. Uh, people want to know what flowers can we plant to attract the bees to our garden. Now, what is a good suggestion or, or good flowers that you would recommend to plant to, to bring those pollinators in? Well, I always start with native plants for your area. So, you know, if you have a, a native plant society in your area, just look up what plants they like to grow. Because bees love everything. And for example, here in California, we have more than a thousand species of native bees, so we're trying to reach all of them, not just the honey producers. And we also recommend planting lemon green sunflowers because they provide more pollen nectar than other uh, sunflowers do. All herbs will flower and eventually attract pollinators. Calendula, which is a great pest control as well, and things like cornflower and lavender and and even artichokes, when you let a few of them go to flower, bees really love those. Okay. So let's talk about your newest digital book, 400 Plus Tips for Organic Gardening Success. Where can we find it, as well as your other books and more information on you? Sure. So you can find information about my book at gardennerd.com. It's G-A-R-D-E-N-E-R-E.com. And 400 Plus Tips for Organic Gardening Success is a only book. You can get it on Kindle, and if you don't have a Kindle itself, download the Kindle app to any device, uh, laptop, phone, tablet, desktop, computer, and it, it's $5.99 on Kindle. And my other book, uh, my uh, Gardening Geeks book is out of print, but I am rewrite right now for an updated version that's coming out next year. Well, Christy, we really appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us in the program and, and share some of the information that uh, we follow you with and uh, are, are intrigued that 
we can all learn together, especially about the aphids and, the, and uh, using worm casting to, as a combat mechanism to get rid of them. Sure thing. Happy to be here. Well, when we come back, it's all about your garden questions and our garden answers. You can visit us at any time at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com where there's 1,400 garden videos, short and long format, for your viewing, entertaining, and educational uh, uh, whatever you want to watch them for. Uh, you can also send us an email at twvgshow at gmail.com. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this. Send your questions in now to the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Garden Instant Access text hotline at 414-368-9311. That number again, text 414-368-9311 and send your garden question in. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses, find out more at flameengineering.com. Use coupon code WVG19 to get free shipping. Gardeners know the hardest part of building a garden is building the rows. Now there is a long overdue patented, hand-pulled, heavy-duty, lightweight row building marvel that you can find at rowmaker.com. The rowmaker can easily and quickly build multiple straight line, perfectly spaced rows of proportional height, width, and depth. This yellow workhorse makes building rows easy and so fast it will save you hours. Just pull it across your tilled garden and work smarter, not harder. See it to believe it at rowmaker.com. Planting your garden will never Never get easy. Wisconsin Greenhouse Company has custom-made greenhouses to suit your needs. Grow fruit and vegetables all year long. Strongest greenhouses available that will last a lifetime. Beautiful design available in any size and color. Weather resistant, energy efficient to save on that heating cost. Mix and match with glazings to suit your climate. Sturdy and durable. They'll hold up to those heavy snow loads. They'll even add them to homes. For agricultural to lodging to entertaining, it's a great addition to any garden or landscape. Check them out at WisconsinGreenhouseCompany.com. Get your garden growing with a Chapin Garden Seeder. Eliminate the back-breaking work of planting seeds in your garden. The Model 8701B Seeder makes it easy to accomplish planting rows of seeds of various sizes. Find the Chapin Garden Seeder online or order it through your local Home Depot. True Value or Do It Best Hardware Store. To see the full line of Chapin Lawn and Garden products, go to www.chapinmfg.com. The Norwalk Juicer is the best cold-pressed juicer on the market. Studies have shown the Norwalk Juicer produces 50 to 100% more juice than other juicers. And juice from the Norwalk is higher in minerals and nutritionally superior. Not only do you get more juice from your produce, but also better quality juice. Check it out at norwalkjuicers.com. Use coupon code GARDEN talk to get free continental U.S. shipping on the Model 290 juicer. Drip Garden is a self-watering, self-fertilizing pop-up vertical garden with automatic timer. Easy to use, durable, grow 36 plants in a 4 foot by 4 foot area. DripGarden.com Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at MIGardener.com Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom and organic flower, vegetable and herb seeds available year round. Pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to migardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. migardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at rootassassinshovel.com. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mills also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mills today. 
Lumel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Eco Garden Systems, Rowmaker, Shield and Seal, World's Coolest Rain Gauge, Big Fats Hot Sauce, Chapin International, Drip Garden, Norwalk Juicers, New New Healing Ointment, Phylum Bioproducts, Soil Savvy, Tree Ripe. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. You can get a hold of us on the ivyorganic.com hotline. Ivy Organic 3-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields pruned and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. You can reach us by the ivyorganics.com 301 plant guard email inbox, and that address is twvgshow at gmail.com. Or you can text us on the instant access ivyorganics.com text line, and that's 414. 414- Three six eight nine three one one. You can tweet us using hashtag TWVG. Our Twitter handle is at TWVG Show. Don't forget our text line is at four one four three six eight nine three one one. Had a number of questions come in throughout the week, social media platforms, email, and alike. Betty asked, I have grown leeks for years, but lately they've all gone to seed or bolt. What am, what's going on? So basically the, the, the leeks are planted when it's cool, and then it, then it gets hot. And it gets, and and it gets, gets cool, cool again. again. So it goes it in shock. Yeah, it goes into shock, basically. It kind it, of and, confuses and, itself. And leeks are biannual, so they'll produce seed the second year. So you plant them early, it's cool, it gets warm, then it gets cool again. The leeks think it's in their second year of growth because they've gone through a cold cycle, and then they put seed pods on. So it's not really a whole lot of... You can plant them a little later in the year, so you only get that cool into warm cycle, and you'll be okay. Okay, so should I... Number two here, should I yeah. transplant peppers into the garden when the soil temperature is 70 degrees um and should i put a row cover over them then and yeah so you can keep them you can 70 degrees is fine we've done it at 60 65 and they've been fine um there is no reason to put a row cover over them at that time yeah and, and just uh, full sun is what the peppers require and plenty of water on a regular basis for that uh, let's see here. Here's a unique question that we came got in this week I wanted to address. I have a rutabaga that sprouted, that I bought, that I sprouted. I feel bad and didn't want to throw it away, so I put it in water. Now it's growing atop and, and has sprouts. Is there any way I can plant it? No. Well, well, here's, here's okay. what, you can plant it. You can't because um, it's, can. bi- it's, yeah, it's a biannual. So it's biannual. So that means that what will happen is when you plant it, it probably won't put a root on. But it will, it will. The root will actually decrease in size because the energy will be put into the uh, sprouts in right. order so to... Right, it'll, so it'll, it'll make seeds yeah. for you. So then you can get more rutabaga seeds. So you're not being like counterproductive. You are being productive, but it's not going to grow a rutabaga. I would caution anybody that does something like that because you don't know the variety. You don't know where it was initially grown. You don't know what uh, genetics it may have in it. It's a good experimental process, but I, I would just caution to, to a little bit, especially people want to do that with onions as well. And if you are trying to save seeds uh, from an onion you got from the store, it may be a short day or a neutral day onion, and you're trying to grow it in the north or vice versa. Um, you're not going to know the variety, and that's going to be the, the, the bad portion or the, the, the bad end result on this. Something to eat my tulips? This is another question. Maybe rabbit, squirrel, any thoughts? Um, uh, definitely it's rabbits. Rabbits uh, love tulips, and uh, they will devastate a tulip crop uh, very, very quickly uh, in your garden. So you could try something like Bobex? Bobex would be a good uh, thing. Uh, some people will cage their tulips. I know it's not the most uh, pleasant-looking, uh, uh, appealing thing, but you get to see the tulips. Uh, before the rabbits devour them, so that's that's always right. a positive. Um, so this is my first year um, planting tomato or to trick the to treat the soil before planting tomatoes. I came across something regarding Epsom salt and tomatoes. Could you please elaborate on that? Yeah. So Epsom salt is not. So a lot of times people add Epsom salt because they think that it's going to increase the calcium to prevent blossom end rot. That's not true. What you want to do is um, 
at just continually water. So be consistent with your watering. A lot of times calcium gets locked up in the soil because you're not consistently watering. So you want to make sure that you are consistently watering. Get yourself on a watering schedule three times a week, whatever you whatever you want, and then um, go from there. But Epsom salt is very, very good for blossoms. It makes very large blossoms on fruit and flowers. So you can apply that according to the recommendations you find online. So it's not a bad thing to add to your garden soil in, in recommended quantities. If I transplant some watermelons and squash outside, should I put a row cover over them or not? Well, the answer to this is simply watermelon seeds uh, indoors, you want to plant them if you're going to do it indoors, which we don't recommend, we recommend just direct sowing them outside, uh, six weeks before spring, your spring's last average frost date. The seeds would germinate in about 10 days when the soil gets to 65 degrees. So you shouldn't have no problem getting them to sprout indoors. You need to put a row cover on them or a low tunnel uh, apparatus if you're going to intend to put them outside early on in the season to try to get a jump start. The fuss uh, for us, we recommend just putting them right in the ground or conditioning a straw bale and growing them in a straw bale. But uh, you can do it. Roxanne would like to know, what should the day and night temps be before planting my cool weather crops out that you speak about? Uh, it's more about the soil temperature at root zone. Four, three to four inches below soil grade than the actual ambient temperature. So as long as your soil temperature is in the range of 40 to 50 degrees, you're going to be fine uh, to put out your cool weather crops. Make sure you've hardened them off and they can, they're, they're good to go, and the te- temperatures are going to be steady. It's not going to be 80 degrees one day and 20 uh, degrees the next day. Our next question is from Roger from South Chicago, and he wants to know how much nitrogen is required to grow sweet corn in his backyard. So we're going to go out to Ben Bartley. He is from Standard Process Farms. Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer for over 90 years. To help identify the best supplements for you, find your local health care professional today. Go to standardprocess.com forward slash patient. Hi, this is Ben Bartlett from the Standard Process Organic Farm. And today we got a question from Roger in South Chicago about how much nitrogen it takes to grow sweet corn. Nothing tastes quite as good as fresh sweet corn, especially if you put the time and energy into growing it yourself. Sweet corn is a grass, and it tends to produce more crop the more nitrogen you give it. But keep in mind, all that nitrogen doesn't have to come from adding fertilizer. Make sure that you put a legume crop in ahead of where you're going to plant your sweet corn, something like beans or clovers or vetches. That can provide a lot of sweet uh, nitrogen for that sweet corn without adding extra fertilizer. Any other amendments you can make to that soil, like compost and micronutrients, they're going to help that, that soil give back more nitrogen or as much nitrogen as it can. Don't forget that adding those micronutrients can get you a sweeter and tastier crop. And then the final tip on growing really good sweet corn is that you've gotta have consistent watering. Making sure that crop doesn't dry out to the point that it stops growing and starts to wilt, that will help with that efficient use of all those nutrients you put down and in the end, you're going to end up with a sweeter, tastier crop. Well, we are out of time, and we certainly appreciate yours. Before we get into what's coming up next week on the program, I want to remind you that... The executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Coming up next week on the program, we're going to discuss crops that you should not be growing in your vegetable garden this year, and we'll give the reasons why. Plus, the impact of intensive gardening, what it means, and how it can benefit you. Plus, Kelly Smith-Tribble will be with us, author, to talk about her new book, plus your garden questions. That's all next week. Do not miss it. Miss any portion of this program or want to revisit in its entirety, you can do that a couple of ways. By going to your favorite podcast-providing website, searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, or by going to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com website, clicking on the radio tab or the highlight tab on the right-hand side of the page. Until next week, for Hollybeard, 
I'm Joy Bird, and we will see you in the garden. You've been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Tell a friend and join Joy and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcasting, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communication Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.